Ever wondered how the languages we speak today came to be? How about the Afroasiatic languages? Ever pondered their origins? Language, it's a fascinating thing. It's our primary tool for communication, for expressing our thoughts, our feelings, our dreams and our fears. It's the medium through which we share knowledge, tell stories and build societies. But where did they all come from? How did they evolve and diversify into the rich tapestry of tongues we have today? Among the myriad languages on Earth, there's a group that stands out due to its sheer diversity and geographical spread. We're talking about the Afroasiatic languages, a family that encompasses around 300 languages, predominantly spoken in the Middle East, North Africa, the Horn of Africa, and parts of the Sahel. Now you might think, 300 languages, that's a lot, and you'd be right. But what's even more fascinating is the variety within this group. We're talking about languages like Arabic, spoken by hundreds of millions of people across multiple continents. We're also talking about Amharic, the official language of Ethiopia, a country with a rich history dating back thousands of years. Then there's Somali, the mother tongue of the Somali people, who have a deep-rooted culture and a nomadic heritage. And let's not forget Hebrew, a language that has been at the heart of Jewish culture and religion for millennia. These languages and many others in the Afroasiatic group have unique characteristics and histories. They've shaped and been shaped by the cultures, societies, and civilizations that have used them. But where did they come from? How did they evolve? Why are they so diverse yet share certain similarities? These are questions that have puzzled linguists and scholars for centuries. The origins of these languages, however, are shrouded in mystery, leading to the Afroasiatic hypothesis. So, what exactly is this Afroasiatic hypothesis, you might ask? Well, let's delve into it. The Afroasiatic hypothesis is a linguistic hypothesis that suggests a common ancestor for all Afroasiatic languages, languages that span regions from East Africa to the Middle East. This hypothetical language often referred to as Proto-Afroasiatic is believed to have existed several thousand years ago. Now imagine a language so ancient, so foundational, that it served as the root for languages as diverse as Arabic, Hebrew, Amharic, and Somali. That's the marvel of the Afroasiatic hypothesis. It's like a time capsule, a linguistic bridge to a prehistoric era. One of the key features of this hypothetical language is its rich consonantal system. This means that the language was likely abundant in consonant sounds. The diversity of these sounds would have given the language a unique texture and rhythm, a kind of linguistic music, if you will. Another fascinating aspect of Proto-Afroasiatic is the use of prefixes and suffixes. This feature, known as inflection, is quite common in many modern languages. Inflection allows for the modification of a word's meaning and grammatical function. So, imagine a language with a rich array of prefixes and suffixes, able to convey subtle nuances and complex ideas. This is the beauty of the potential Proto-Afroasiatic language. However, it's essential to remember that the Afroasiatic hypothesis, as intriguing as it is, is still just that, a hypothesis. It's a hypothesis born of linguistic exploration and scholarly curiosity, a fascinating lens through which we can examine the complex tapestry of human communication. Despite the compelling arguments and the tantalizing possibilities it presents, no concrete evidence has been found to support the Afroasiatic hypothesis. It remains a mystery, a captivating enigma in the world of linguistics and anthropology. Yet, this is merely a hypothesis, as no concrete evidence has been found to support it. It's a reminder that in the quest for knowledge, sometimes the journey is just as important as the destination. And in the case of the Afroasiatic hypothesis, what a journey it is. With such a hypothesis, controversies and debates are bound to arise, aren't they? And arise they have, with the Afroasiatic hypothesis. For starters, there's a significant disagreement among linguists about the time and place of the original Afroasiatic language. Some scholars place the origins as far back as 10,000 years ago in the Eastern Sahara region, while others argue for a more recent timeline around 6,000 years ago and a different location, the Horn of Africa or the Levant. This divergence of opinion isn't arbitrary. It's informed by different interpretations of linguistic, archaeological, and genetic evidence, each with its own set of assumptions and limitations. Which brings us to the next controversy, the lack of direct archaeological evidence. Archaeology can provide insights into the culture, lifestyle, and migrations of ancient populations. However, it's largely silent on the languages they spoke. There are no Rosetta Stones for the Afroasiatic languages, no bilingual inscriptions to guide us. We're trying to piece together a puzzle with many of the pieces missing, 
And then there's the challenge of reconstructing ancient languages. This is a painstaking process that involves comparing words and grammar across different languages, looking for similarities that suggest a common ancestor. But it's not foolproof. Languages can borrow words from each other, creating false leads. And some words change so rapidly that their original form is lost in just a few thousand years. The controversies surrounding the Afro-Asiatic hypothesis aren't just academic squabbles. They highlight the inherent challenges in tracing the origins of languages, the complexities of interpreting indirect evidence, and the limitations of our current methodologies. They also underscore the need for interdisciplinary approaches combining linguistics, archaeology, genetics and more, to unravel the enigma of language origins. And finally, these controversies underscore one more thing, the need for more research. As we delve deeper into the mysteries of the Afro-Asiatic languages, each answer prompts new questions, each discovery reveals new complexities. These controversies show the complexity of tracing language origins and the need for more research. The Afro-Asiatic hypothesis, if proven true, would have significant implications, wouldn't it? Let's delve into that. If indeed all Afro-Asiatic languages have a common root, it could drastically reshape our understanding of human migration patterns. It would suggest that ancient populations moved across vast territories carrying their languages with them, which then evolved and diversified over time. Consider this. The Afro-Asiatic languages include Arabic, Hebrew, Amharic, Somali, and many others. They're spoken from the Middle East to North Africa and even in parts of East Africa. If these languages do share a common ancestor, it means their speakers must have migrated across these regions, influencing and being influenced by different cultures along the way. And speaking of cultures, this hypothesis could also shed light on cultural exchanges in ancient times. Language is a carrier of culture after all. So, the similarities and differences we observe among Afro-Asiatic cultures could be partly explained by their linguistic connections. For instance, shared words for certain concepts or artifacts might point to shared cultural practices or exchanges. But perhaps the most intriguing implication of the Afro-Asiatic hypothesis lies in the development of civilizations. The cradle of civilization lies in the Afro-Asiatic region, with ancient societies like Egypt and Mesopotamia. If we accept that Afro-Asiatic languages have a common ancestor, it might suggest that these civilizations were more interconnected than we currently believe. It could mean that these societies, through language, shared knowledge, ideas and innovations, contributing to each other's development. Ultimately, the Afro-Asiatic hypothesis offers us a new lens to view our past. It could redefine our understanding of how societies evolved, how cultures interacted, and how humans migrated across continents. It's a testament to the power of language, not just as a tool for communication, but as a marker of human history and a driver of human progress. These implications make the Afro-Asiatic hypothesis a fascinating subject of study. The Afro-Asiatic hypothesis may still be a puzzle, but it opens up exciting possibilities for future research, doesn't it? As we delve into the future of Afro-Asiatic studies, we see a landscape rich with potential where the lines between disciplines blur to create a vibrant tapestry of knowledge exploration. The field of Afro-Asiatic studies is not confined to linguistics alone. It's a thrilling intersection of various disciplines, archaeology, anthropology, genetics, and more. Each one has a vital role to play in our understanding of this intriguing hypothesis. Archaeologists, for example, can unearth artifacts that provide tangible evidence of ancient Afro-Asiatic cultures. Anthropologists, on the other hand, can offer insights into the social and cultural contexts in which these languages were spoken. Then, there's the role of genetics. By studying the genetic makeup of populations that speak Afro-Asiatic languages, we can trace the migration patterns of these groups, potentially shedding light on when and where these languages originated. This interdisciplinary approach is not just beneficial, it's essential. It allows us to view the Afro-Asiatic hypothesis from multiple angles, enhancing our understanding and bringing us closer to unraveling this linguistic mystery. As we move forward, we also can't ignore the potential of new technologies in deciphering ancient languages and tracing their origins. Machine learning algorithms, for instance, can analyze vast amounts of linguistic data, identifying patterns and connections that might be too complex for human researchers to detect. Similarly, advancements in genetic sequencing technologies could provide more accurate and detailed information about the genetic lineage of Afro-Asiatic-speaking populations. 
The Afroasiatic hypothesis is more than just a hypothesis about language origins, it's a testament to the complexity and diversity of human cultures. And with each new discovery, each new piece of the puzzle that falls into place, we get a deeper appreciation of our shared human heritage. The Afroasiatic hypothesis despite its controversies continues to inspire and challenge researchers, making the study of languages a thrilling journey of discovery. Enjoyed our exploration of the Afroasiatic language hypothesis? Show your support by hitting the like button and subscribing to our channel. This ensures you won't miss our future videos on intriguing topics. Don't forget the notification bell for instant updates. Thank you for joining us in unraveling the mysteries of our shared human heritage. Keep exploring with us.